You're listening to Du okay, Dupont. Wait, that's Dune, something totally Dune different. Steve. National No, there's no national. Dune Steve Podcast Recording Month. Dupo Is it Dupo Remo? Yes. Dupo Remo. Isn't Duplo those blocks that they the the little kids play with with Legos? Did I say Duplo? Shoot. Do no po. Oh, I didn't. Then why did you <laughs> you screwed it up again? On Say purpose. It. On purpose. Not on purpose. Say Dupo Remo. Dupo Remo. It's just a bummer, if you ask me. I don't know what the deal is, but uh, makes me sad that more people don't put more into the story and the characters and the things that make people want to come back and see more. And maybe it's because shitty movies like Transformers make, you know, shit tons of cash. And so they realize they don't need to put effort into that because people don't care. They'll go and see it anyways. Yeah, we've talked about that and what a precedent a movie like that sets. But at the same time, I think there's a positive in 2011 being such a down year for Hollywood. We've seen just a tiny bit of the ripples of movies like Green Lantern failing, and that is the studios changing their minds on some of these enormously budgeted flicks like Lone Ranger, like in the although, Mountains of Madness. Although the uh, Lone Ranger, they come back around again, on, right? Yeah, well, it was 270 that they balked on and now it's like 210, which is still just an obscene amount. Especially for a uh, Western, but I guess it's a Western make, with werewolves. So they were going to make a Paradise Lost movie for I, I, you know some unbelievable amount of money and they've decided to shelve that because the budget was too high they were going to do arthur and lancelot just recently they shelved that because of the budget i don't understand how the budget for that can be too high how much was the budget for that what is it camelot is that the name of the series that was on uh, stars if they can do something, I don't know. Like, let's say two or three uh, million dollars an episode. Yeah, if they can do something like that on stars, it, it might be even less than that, actually. Then how is it that they can't get a just one two-hour movie in? Well, that's what I was complaining to you about today. What is the? They make these two hundred million dollar Sherlock Holmes movies that are jam-packed from beginning to end with transforming battleships and CG <laughs> and explosions and all this stuff. Wait, so this is a this is set in the 25th century Sherlock Holmes? No, no, it's still Victorian England. Oh, wait, how can that cost $200 million? And you see it, and it was just tons and tons and tons of spectacle. And yeah, that's just my opinion, but I would much rather have seen a $30 million Sherlock Holmes movie where the focus was on Robert Downey Jr. and Jude Law trying to solve the mystery. Yeah, and, and being all smart. All sorts of acrobatics and, and fantastic things blowing up in slow motion. And uh, Sorry, it's, that's, that's what I care about. And that's partly because I've seen so many movies, just like you said, seeing a ship blow up or, or something, you know, explode does not thrill me anymore. Yeah. Seeing somebody fall in love for the first time or seeing somebody's heart broken or seeing somebody work toward a goal and achieve it. That's what grabs yeah, me. That's what grabs me. Seeing a unique character that isn't exactly like every, you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger that played uh, every action movie before, but it's something really interesting and something that you want to get to know better. Seeing a bunch of characters like you saw on Firefly where you're like, oh, this character's really interesting. That character's really, this one's my favorite. That one's my favorite. That's the kind of things that uh, are what's going to make something last. Well, that's what television does, man. Yeah, that's what they do now. I will go back to Firefly and that. All those kind of... We talked about Community just a, a few minutes ago. That's what makes that show so great. The first episode I saw of that show was the bottle episode where all the characters are stuck in the room for the entirety of the episode and uh, you go through and it's just the characters of these people that make it interesting. And the same thing we talked about one of our favorite episodes of that show of all is the Dungeons and Dragons episode. They're sitting at the table playing friggin' Dungeons and Dragons the entire time. They don't cut away to scenes of a dragon and knights and fairies and gnomes and etc. They just have these people 
pretending to be them and sitting there and their characters make this show worth watching and funny as hell just because the characters are interesting. It's something you couldn't get in film. You just can't get somebody to spend that much time. I'm, I'm really kind of interested to see because Joss Whedon came up through television. He's been a uh, television guy. He did lot, several series, including Firefly, which is you know one of our favorites of all time. Now he's doing Avengers, and I'm interested to see just how that turns out. Will it be as good as a Joss Whedon TV show is, or is it going to be all bombastic things blowing up and guys saying, I gots to get me one of these each time that something happens? I'm really uh, curious to see how it turns out. Well, I don't know. It's not just him calling the shots, right. and, and, and I don't know how much creative control he got it sounded like they gave him a big length of rope to hang himself with <laughs> the, um, but you know it, it's also because marvel was a new studio the first movie they made was iron man and so they were able to focus on making the best iron man movie they could or doing justice to these characters that the people who made it loved yeah uh, but by the time avengers came along they're Practically, they're, they're, they're a mini major studio, and they're owned by one of the major studios now. Right. And so who knows if the pressure is on to, you know, fill it with more explosions and stuff. To be continued. Please, sir, that gets my goat is produced under a Creative Commons 3.0 license. Don't be a butt.